people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi along with the US President Joe Biden launched India-US Climate and Clean Energy Agenda 2030 partnership to help mobilize investments, demonstrate clean technologies and enable green collaborations. The Virtual Climate Change Summit which took place on April 22 and 23 was hosted by US President Joe Biden who invited 40 world leaders to discuss new measures to strengthen commitments they made to reduce emissions under the Paris Climate Agreement. Speaking at the Climate Leaders Summit, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi stressed the importance of sustainable lifestyle changes to support climate action post-COVID. The Virtual Climate Change Summit, which took place on April 22nd and 23rd, was hosted by US President Joe Biden, who invited 40 world leaders to discuss new measures to strengthen commitments they made to reduce emissions under the Paris Climate Agreement. So today, I want to emphasize the importance of lifestyle change in climate action. Sustainable lifestyles and guiding philosophy of back to basic must be an important pillar of our economic strategy for the post-COVID era. UN climate scientists say the world's net CO2 emissions must fall to zero by 2050 to limit the rise in global temperatures to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius compared with pre-industrial levels. Exceeding that amount of warming would unleash the most severe impacts of climate change. President Biden and I are launching the India-US Climate and Clean Energy Agenda 2030 Partnership. Together, we will help mobilize investments, demonstrate clean technologies, and enable green collaborations. Earlier, the Biden administration pledged to slash U.S. greenhouse gas emissions by 50 percent to 52 percent from 2005 levels by 2030. A new target it hopes will spur other big emitter countries to raise their ambition to combat climate change. The goal unveiled at the start of a two-day climate summit comes as the United States seeks to reclaim global leadership in the fight against global warming after former President Donald Trump withdrew the country from international efforts to cut emissions. By maintaining those investments and putting these people to work, the United States sets out on the road to cut greenhouse gases in half, in half by the end of this decade. That's where we're headed as a nation. And that's what we can do if we take action to build an economy that's not only more prosperous, but healthier, fairer, and cleaner for the entire planet. It also marks an important milestone in Biden's broader plan to decarbonize the U.S. economy entirely by 2050, an agenda he says can create millions of good-paying jobs, but which many Republicans say they fear will damage the economy. The emissions cuts are expected to come from power plants, automobiles and other sectors across the economy, but the White House did not set individual targets for those industries. Moving on. 
As COVID resurgence sweeps South Asia, Bangladesh has floated a new COVID-dedicated hospital in capital Dhaka. The government says it will ease pressure on the healthcare system of the country that has been overwhelmed with coronavirus patients. Several other private organizations with volunteers have also joined the fight. Bangladesh imposed a lockdown in early April, which has been extended twice till now. Bangladesh has opened a new hospital exclusively for COVID patients as the government steps up its efforts to contain COVID research in the country that is infecting thousands every day. The move comes after the government imposed stricter restrictions across the country and extended the lockdown till 28th April that was first imposed as partial lockdown in the first week of the month. According to local media, the hospital has 1,000 beds for patients and was opened since most local hospitals are now overwhelmed with coronavirus patients. As many as 250 of the 1,000 beds will initially be available and it is hoped that the hospital will be fully operational by the end of the month. The government of Bangladesh says it has been working to ensure more beds in hospitals across the country and more than 12,000 of them will have central oxygen supply connections. Meanwhile, volunteers and businesses in Dhaka took the initiative to help those in need. A transgender volunteer organization on Tuesday helped patients register and discharge at a local hospital. I am transgender. I am transgender. I am transgender. অসহায় যে রোগীগুলো আছে সেই রোগীগুলোর জরুরি যে কোনো প্রয়োজনের কাজ এখান থেকে কোনো কিছু ক্যারি করে নিয়ে যাওয়া বা এমন একজন پیشنট আছে তার পক্ষে অ্যাম্বুলেন্স বা সিএনজি এখন নিয়ে যাওয়ার মতো টাকা নেই আমাদের একটা গাড়ি আছে সংগঠনের আমরা ওই গাড়িটা দিয়ে তাদেরকে যে গন্তব্যস্থলে পৌঁছে দেই সংগঠনের নাম কি বৃহন্নলা আমাদের সংগঠনের নাম বৃহন্নলা ঢাকা ইউনিভার্সিটির তখন উনারা আমাদেরকে ইনভলভ করে আমাদেরকে একসাথে করে সমাজের এই কাজগুলো করার জন্য আমাদেরকে ডাকছিল এবং গত The situation for the underprivileged has become increasingly grim. Day laborers and the poor hit by the lockdown queued up for food handouts distributed by a local bank. They have lost jobs and have run out of ration. Bangladesh has so far recorded around 738,000 cases with over 10,700 succumbing to the virus. The country has started its vaccination drive with India-made vaccines, but in absence of its own vaccine, that task is tough and mighty. Precaution, they say, is the only way left to strengthen the fight and keep corona at bay. Moving on. Last week, we showed you how commoners in Afghanistan questioned U.S. President Joe Biden's final stamp on the complete withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan. Well, the list of those expressing similar apprehensions is just getting longer. While some say it is the moral obligation of the U.S. to stay until the peace returns, others are accusing Washington of worsening the situation for they fear Taliban will regain hold of the country and all the progress made will be lost. Women will suffer the most if any of their fears come true. Rolling boxing wraps, wearing professional gloves, and setting on a draining punching and kicking session at an indoor Kabul club, this is Hafiza Behmani. This 24-year-old national Muay Thai player has not just made great strides in her sport, 
but is also inspiring and training as many as 70 others. But with the announcement by President Joe Biden that U.S. troops will leave Afghanistan by September 11, she said she fears many of her gains could be lost. که قرار شده نیروهای آمریکایی از کشور ما بره و نه تنها تشویش ما است همون بانوانی است که سالها دختران ما زنان ما زحمت کشه در این عرصه دستاوردهای خیلی زیاد را داشتند در چندین سال و زمینی پیشرفت بر خودشان ایجاد کردند و نمیخواین که اینا پایمال شوند میخواین در این چارچوکات باشند و پیشرفت زیاد را بکنند The 1996-2001 Taliban regime was notorious for denying women and girls access to education, employment, freedom of movement and health care, and subjecting them to violence, including public lashing or execution by stoning. The foreign troop withdrawals have raised concerns that the country could erupt in full-scale civil war, providing Taliban an opportunity to return. ما تمام بانوان افغانستان خواهان یک سال سر تا سری هستیم ما نمیخواهیم در گذشته ها برگردیم گذشته هایی که طالبان روز سیاه را که به سر زنان, اف... زنان افغانی می آوردن و نمی ماندن حتی اینا تحصیل بکنن ورزش بکنن حتی نمی ماندن تا به دکان بر و بر خودشان خرید بکنن A recent Human Rights Watch report said that the Taliban were deliberately targeting journalists and other media workers, including women in Afghanistan. Threats and attacks against journalists across the country have increased sharply since talks began between the Afghan government and the Taliban, heightening concerns about preserving freedom of expression and the media in any peace settlement. ما فکر میکنم با توجه به شکنندگی وضعیت امنیتی در افغانستان به موقع نیست که امریکای از افغانستان حالا بیرون میشن به دلیلی که خب شما میدونین جنگ کماکان در میدان نبرد افغانستان ادامه داره با مسائل بسیار اساس و ریشه‌ای در افغانستان در موزل جنگ افغانستان نگاه نشده یکی از عواملی که جنگ را تقویت میکنه تنها گروه های افراطی و تنرو نیست موضوع مواد مخدر افغانستان یک بحث بسیار جدی است که بهش نگاه نشده موزل قاچاق معادن در افغانستان یک بحث بسیار جدی است و این مسائل تا که حل نشه من فکر میکنم جنگ در افغانستان خاتمه پیدا نمیکنم Observers say that Afghan security forces are not equipped enough to challenge the Taliban that has already recaptured large swathes of territory. And when they will be left to defend the country on its own with limited capabilities and scant resources, the Afghan society is set to lose it all. And now in our section of Asia this week, the stories from across the continent that made news this week. A Hong Kong professor has developed a program using role-playing robots to help children with autism improve their social skills, an initiative that has been adopted by other non-profit groups and schools. The program Robot for Autism Behavioral Intervention or RABI is designed for people with autism between the ages of 3 and 18 and aims to help them to be more social and to resolve issues such as conflicts and bullying. So usually we start with the de bad demonstrations followed by the good demonstration and then invite the child with autism to engage in the role play uh, during the classes. And we also ask them the questions in order to make sure them to understand that the importance of the uh, appropriate behaviors. More than 1,200 children have used the program since its launch in 2015.
Tensions are high between Israel and Syria after a Syrian missile exploded in southern Israel, the Israeli military said in an incident that triggered warning sirens near the secretive Dimona nuclear reactor. An Israeli military spokesman identified it as an SC-5 surface-to-air missile fired by Syrian forces against Israel aircraft that overflew its target and reached the Dimona area, which lies 200 km south of the Syrian border. It did not hit the reactor, landing some 30 km away, the spokesman said. In response, Israel launched further overnight attacks inside Syria, targeting several missile batteries, including the one that fired the SA-5. It follows weeks of heightened tension between Israel and Iran, a close ally of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad amid renewed negotiations surrounding Tehran's nuclear program. Giving a feel to the country's culture and traditions, Japanese company Nisi has come up with a new product, Nippon Soft Cream. Corn of the ice cream is made with a combination of two colors, white and red, as both are considered lucky in Japanese tradition. The brownish color of the cream is due to one of its ingredients, azuki beans from Hokkaido. A confectionery shop Kamakura Itoka Located in one of Japan's ancient cities, Kamakura has introduced this ice cream. あの、ま、え、日本の味というはやはりその小豆の味出すので、え、まさに日本のソフトクリームといった味わいだと思います。鎌倉というその日本のま、その伝統と文化のある、そういう町にやって私どもはお菓子屋さんというえ、仕事を
With the beginning of the holy month of Ramadan, Muslims across South Asia have started fasting and focusing on spiritual development and self-reflection. The holy month is regarded as one of the five pillars of Islam and lasts 29 to 30 days from one sighting of the crescent moon to the next. It is believed to be a time of observation, fortitude and intense worship that also brings cheers as festivities grip. However, the festivities have been low-key this year due to a spike in coronavirus cases. Have a look. Muslims gathered at mosque across India as the holy month of Ramadan commenced amid the surge of coronavirus cases in the country. Cautious devotees were seen complying COVID protocols including social distancing and hand sanitization and wearing of masks. The government has imposed strict restrictions in parts where a massive surge has been reported, while other parts have limited relaxation. We have to appeal to the people that you have to do in your homes, in your homes, in your homes, in your homes, in your homes. हम तो लोगों से अपील कर रहे हैं लेकिन इसके लिए जो धर्म स्थल हैं धर्म स्थान हैं उनके लिए भी क्लियर गाइडलाइन होनी चाहिए और सरकार को कुछ करना चाहिए आजकल सिर्फ वैक्सीन के टीके लगाने से बात नहीं बनेगी मार्केट्स इन अफगानिस्तान की कैपिटल काबुल वर बिजीयर देन यूशुल एस पीपल ब्रॉट फूड एंड स्पेशल ट्रीट्स फॉर इफ्तार the meal eaten at sunset each evening when the fast is broken. In Afghanistan, spicy and sweet foods are traditionally sold and consumed during Ramadan. We are Ramadan and we are grateful to all Muslims and to all of us. We are for the blessings, for the blessings. We have to be able to get out of the way, 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 out of the way. In another major South Asian town and capital of Bangladesh, Dhaka, People thronged markets to purchase the traditional foods to be consumed during the fast-breaking iftar meal. The iftari meal is not complete without snacks like vegetable fritters, samosas and jalebi and many lip-smacking dishes. Pakistani Muslims are also drenched in Ramadan festivities. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar, during which Muslims do not consume food or even water from dawn till dusk. They start their day with sehri, a pre-dawn meal, and end it with iftar meal in the evening, which the devotees usually have with family and friends. It is a time to detach from worldly pleasures and focus on one's prayers. The holy month of Ramadan culminates with Eid al-Fitr, the end of the fasting period and also a festival of fanfare with Gayatri. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.